Today we were working with a group of third grade students and they were in their computer lab time, which they have about 45 minutes every week. And we were doing one of the hour of code computer programming classes. It's approximately a 20 hour class. It's a level one class. Uh, we saw it when we did Hour of Code back in December and initially logged into it. The kids um, work at their own pace. It's a class that teaches the back end of what computer gaming looks like. So they're learning how to do some basic programming, initially moving blocks and then eventually also moving text at the same time. So if you're ready to go, go ahead and click and log into your next screen and rock and roll. If you have questions, ask me. Um, the kids have a really good time and when we say we're going to log into Hour of Code today, uh, they get really like amped up about it. So it's one of the projects they really love. So as a member of the Rodale Teacher Council, we've been studying personalized learning for about the last 18 months. And when I looked at this course, one of the things I was really excited about from the teacher perspective is that the students are all working at their own time, at their own pace. So you can have 20 kids in the room and they're all working exactly where they need to be and they're not advancing in skills until they've mastered the skills in the level where they are. It also provides, as a teacher, the back-end resources for me to actually see where the kids are working in real time so I can call them up and assist them one-on-one, -on -one. I can go to their computer, I can grab groups of three kids that are all, they're it's sitting in three different places, but they're all experiencing the same issue at the same time, and it may be a simple misconception. I can fix that misconception and then send them on their way all at once. We've even done things where, especially in kindergarten, the whole class had the same issue at the same time. We stopped, gathered up on the floor, watched the video again, talked about what we were going to do. Everybody went back to the computers, and then they're off and running again. So. Um, the, all of these resources are free, and I thought that was just the most amazing part is that was exactly what we wanted to do for personalized learning, and so it's very different. Um, when you were coding, one of the skills that you really have to hone and develop is a troubleshooting skill. So you're trying to make something happen. You can see the avatar not doing what you want it to do. Where is, and, and these are the questions I will come and ask you. What were you trying to do? Where are you starting from? Where is the last place that it worked? So we're trying to do the trouble, teach that troubleshooting skill to come up with where's the last place that it worked and then downstream, how do we fix it? Um, and just in terms of, if you think about being eight or nine or 10 years old, that sort of self-reflection, what did you want? Where are you starting from? How do you get there? Where's, where did you have trouble getting there? I mean, that really applies everywhere. So there's a lot of persistence involved just sticking with it, not giving up. So we came up early on with some vocabulary about how this is hard. It's fun, but it's hard. Um, there are some things about like taking a brain break and, and in the class, when it gets really difficult, sometimes I'll let them go out and play some of the coding games that go with this, where you actually have to have those skills and they'll say, hey, I just did this in the class. I know how to do this now. And so the skills actually go with the computer coding games and we just marry them up. So then you can go back into the class, get some more skills, go back and, and actually apply them in real time. Ready? Happy Digital 